Okay. The, since we talked about uh, uh, zeta potential, we're gonna go a little bit a little bit more. So called Stern introduced a model, which kind of a more realistic model that we said. The surface we have a dense absorbed charge, right? Surface fixed charge on the surface due to whatever isomorphic dissolution of something, a substitution or preferred uh, absorption of certain ions we have at the surface. And then within the solution, there are, if the surface absorbed uh, are positive charges, in the solution there are, let's say, negative so called counter ions and the distribution of these counter ions uh, stern treated in two kind of regions one region called stern layer which the counter ion are packed relatively dense relatively dense and quite often the counter ion have different sides from your surface absorbed ion make sense let's say you have surface absorbed proton or something, the counter ion could be a much larger ion. So that's why we draw something like this. The counter ion in this thin layer packed reasonably dense. But because of size and because of the geometry, they cannot pack completely dense. And it's not one-to-one -one ratio. Make sense? As we draw not one-to-one -one because the size or the charge are different. And then further out, I have complete random distribution but gradual decreasing concentration of so-called diffuse layer of counter ion make sense that's kind of for particle we have surface layer dense packed or soft ion a stern layer which relatively packed relatively dense of the counter ion and then diffuse layer just a random packing okay and the uh, outer layer people also call it a goy layer goy chapman model and the zeta potential, this represents the surface potential for the electrokinetic unit. Electrokinetic means driven by electrical field. It's that kinetic means it starts to move. Okay. The electrokinetic unit, that unit that actually slips through the uh, solution, moving through the solution, it's approximated. The potential appro approximated at the interface between the stern layer and the diffuse layer. Approximate. Okay. So if we're going to draw it something, we will draw something like this. The vertical axis is still what? Potential. The horizontal axis would be distance. And then you have surface potential for this highly densely packed absorbed ion. And then you have a region within the stern layer, you have a linear decrease of potential because we are treating this to this layer, one side closely packing, the other side kind of close to, relatively close single layer packing. So in that case, you can imagine the potential is kind of more or less uniform, uh, decrease, right? A straight line. And then outside become a quick exponential decay. And uh, the zeta potential is roughly the potential at the interface between this relatively dense pack, the counter ion, and the random decay counter ion in the so-called diffuse layer. That's the the potential. Approximate. Again, is it it is approximation. It's put close to the potential at the beginning of the diffuse layer. The potential is approximate at the beginning of the diffuse layer, but lower than the particle surface potential. Okay. And it, the impacts depends on the it will impact the phenomena that uh, influence the so-called EDLL or electrical double layer. And interestingly, it's independent of particle size. Whether we have larger particle 
or small particle. The zeta potential actually is independent of the particle size. It's, the potential is more or less determined by how dense the ion compact here and how dense the counter ion compact here and how how they are distributed within the solution. So whether I have local curvature, it doesn't matter that much because compared with this ion, the local curvature always appear to be flat. Make sense? Compared with the ion size, the local particle size always appear to be almost flat. Okay? So that's why it's more or less independent of particle size. And the generally, the higher zeta potential means what? Higher zeta potential means better stability of the particles. Higher zeta potential means better stability. This value is high. This value is high means, okay, the particles are more stable within the solution. Okay. Against the flocculation, they're more stable against the flocculation. Uh, well, on the other hand, the lower zeta potential, this value instead of here, then here, then they would have a tendency to come together, agglomerate. Okay. Typically, for most materials, the zeta potential at the room temperature greater than 25 millivolt is required to achieve a, a kind of stable suspension to counteract the interaction due to Van der Waals force, the attractive force. 